and his inspiration with Jesus. She became pregnant in the same manner as he created Adam with his hand. Verily I invite you to Allah, the one who has no partner, and to friendship, continuity, and government in obedience to him. I invite you to follow me and to have absolute certainty with what I have come with. Verily I am the messenger of Allah, and I invite you and your government forces to Allah, the mighty, the majestic. Thus I have delivered the message and given you counsel. Therefore accept my counsel. Peace be upon he who follows the guidance. This is a very important letter because not only does it express the, the, the message of Islam and conveys the prophethood, but you don't find other letters written by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to the great kings in such a format. It was a brotherly letter. It was a, le a letter in which the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, gives uh, proof of the scriptures. He speaks to the emperor in a language that he could understand. He shows him that the message of Islam is a consistent message, and it is a message of all of the prophets. Later, Najashi wrote back to the Prophet, peace be upon him. The books of Sirah, of the biography of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu record that Najashi replied, from Nagis, Najashi, Ibn Abjar, peace be upon you, O Prophet of Allah, and mercy and blessings. In the name of Allah, besides whom there is no God, who has guided me to Islam. I have received your letter in which you mention the matter of Jesus and the Lord of the heavens and the earth. He is not one bit more than what you say. We know that with which you were sent to us, and we have entertained your cousin and his companions. I testify that you are Allah's apostle, true and confirming those before you. I have given my pledge to you and to your cousin, and I have surrendered myself through him to the Lord of the worlds. I have sent to you my son Arha. I have control only over myself, and if you wish me to come to you, I will do so. I bear witness that what you say is true. Najashi testified to the oneness of God. Najashi showed his relationship with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. From that time, his relationship with, with the Creator of the heavens and the earth changed. But a great rebellion broke out within his land. The Sahaba, at that point, took a special hiding place. And they were prepared to leave the country. But Najashi held out. And he was able to put down the rebellions as they came up within his country. He was able to continue his belief. And his story is a crucial story to Muslims and to those who believe in one God. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was the seal of the prophets and messengers. And his love for his companions continued throughout his life. It is reported that when the Najashi passed away and the word came to the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he prayed a special funeral prayer for Najashi. This is now known as Salat al-Janaza lil ghaib And it is the first time in history that a Janazah prayer was made for an absent person. And so through the example of Najashi, this special Salat al-Janazah, this prayer for the, of the funeral of a person, was established that if the person who dies is not within your location, and it appears that there is nobody to pray upon that person, then you are compelled to make the Janazah Salat. The Prophet, peace be upon him, made a special dua, a special prayer to the Creator of the heavens and the earth. He prayed for Najashi, and he prayed that Islam would spread in his land. This story shows us 
the closeness between the teachings of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and the teachings of Isa alayhi salam which were still existing along the Nile. It also showed that Najashi had accepted Islam. It also showed a strong solidarity between believers and that Islam itself is not confined only to the Arabian Peninsula, but it is the religion of all of the prophets. It confirmed the fact that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, came as the seal of the prophets and messengers. It is reported by Urwa ibn al-Zubayr on the authority of Aisha radiallahu anha that she said, when Najashi died, it used to be said that a light was constantly seen over his grave. This is an important statement. And Ibn Ishaq, the great uh, biographer of the life of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, reports the name of at least 15 of the companions of the Prophet who died in Abyssinia. These graves are located today in the high mountains in the Tigray province in Ethiopia. Here we find the graves of the Sahaba and the graves of Najashi. It is a peaceful place and it is a place where people remember the relationship between believers. It is a place that is of the greatest importance to the history of Islam and the history of Africa itself. What this is showing us, and it is so important for us to reflect upon this, what it shows us is the relationship between the Arabian Peninsula and what is now known as the African continent. In actuality, the Red Sea is not really a barrier between the two. In actuality, there was always a connection between the people. And the people of Ethiopia were migrating to Yemen, to the, to the northern part of Arabia, from earliest times. Also we know in studying language that the Semitic languages were spoken by the peoples not only in the Arabian Peninsula, but Semitic languages were spoken all over Ethiopia. And so a strong relationship existed between these countries. And for people who really look at the history of this part of the world, we need to reflect upon the whole concept of nation states. Does Asia begin with the Red Sea? Is to the right of the Red Sea Asia and to the left of the Red Sea Africa? What is the real reality? From an Islamic perspective, it is all part of the same territory. From an Islamic perspective, and then looking at history itself, we find that this contact was part of a long series of relationships that developed between the people of the Arabian Peninsula and those who were living in the mountains and valleys of Ethiopia. Another important aspect that comes out of the life of Najashi is that the relationship between Muslims and African people has always been one of solidarity. From the beginning, Islam did not enter into the African continent as an imperialistic force. There were no soldiers forcing people to accept Islam, taking slaves in Africa and bringing them back in the name of Islam. Yes, slavery did exist. And many of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were slaves. But these slaves came from Persia, from Europe, from Arabia, from Ethiopia, and from all parts of the neighboring countries. And so slavery was an institution not particular to Arabia, but slavery was an institution that was practiced by people all over the planet. And so the contact that came with Islam opened up a new chapter. Muslims were able to break the bonds of slavery 
that slavery should not be to human beings, but slavery should be to the creator of the heavens and the earth. And so the contact that was made initially between the companions of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and the people of Al-Habasha, Abyssinia, present-day Eritrea and Ethiopia, was one of solidarity. The Arab Muslims came into Abyssinia not as conquerors. They came as refugees. They found sanctuary. They found friendship and brotherhood from a Christian king. This is a lesson from the ancient times, but it is a lesson that is of utmost importance <clears throat> today in the world when tensions have developed between the great monotheistic religions. If we return to the people who followed the original teachings of the great prophets and messengers, we find that the message is fundamentally the same. And I believe that if Jesus and Moses and Muhammad, peace be upon them all, were here today, they would embrace one another and not look for differences between each other. Such it was with the followers of Muhammad, peace be upon him, who went to Ethiopia. The Prophet Muhammad had stated to his followers, go to Ethiopia. It is a land wherein the king will not tolerate injustice. It is a land of truth. Hiya ardu sidqin. Go there until Allah decides for you and relieves you from distress. And so the companions went forward across the Red Sea and they met love, friendship and solidarity. This is an important story of the relationship of Islam to the rest of the world. And so therefore we remember the name of Najashi and we pray that Almighty God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the best in the hereafter and bless him for his striving. I leave you with this thought. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.